Hi. Let's get some experience trying to evaluate algebraic expressions. Evaluating an algebraic expression means that we're going to plug in actual numbers for the variables in the expression. So in this example, I have two expressions, 3x plus 1 and 2 times the quantity in parentheses, x minus 1. Let's see what happens when I say x is equal to the value 2. In this case, 3x plus 1 becomes 3 times 2 plus 1, which is 6 plus 1, which is just 7. The next expression is becomes 2 times 2 minus 1, which is the same as 2 times 1, which is just 2. Okay, what happens if I plug in 5 for x? We're saying x is equal to 5. Here we'll have 3 times 5 plus 1. That's 16. Uh, and in the second expression, 2 times quantity x minus 1 will have 2 times 5 minus 1, that's 2 times 4, is equal to 8. I'd like to mention a few pieces of terminology that are used in algebra. The first word is coefficient. A coefficient is a number that is multiplied by a variable or a group of variables. In this case, 3 is the coefficient in the term 3x. x is a variable. We've mentioned this before. This is a letter that represents some number that we maybe don't know the value of, or it's a value that might change. The term 1 by itself, within the terms that are added together, is called a constant because if I just look at the 1, there's no variable here. So whenever there's no variables in a term, a piece that's being added, that means it's a constant. We call it constant because unlike a variable, it doesn't change. It always stays the same, and we know what it is. Um, as another quick example, let's say I have the expression 5 times x times y minus 6 times z plus 22. Okay, this time 5 is a coefficient, 6 is also a coefficient of z. What I've done is I've looked at each term out of these three terms and said, okay, which ones are the numbers that are multiplied by a variable or a set of variables? In this case, x and y are two variables, but just the 5 is the coefficient. 22 is the constant term. Another important thing to know in algebra is the order of operations in which to evaluate expressions. So let's say I have the expression 2x squared minus 10 divided by 4, and I know that x is equal to 3. Well, there's a lot of operations going on in this expression. There's a power, there's multiplication, 2 times this, there's a subtraction, and there's a division. So which one do we do first? First, we do anything that's inside parentheses or that's in the numerator or the denominator of a fraction. In our example, this means that we're definitely going to evaluate the numerator of the whole fraction before we do that division by 4. Next, we evaluate exponents or powers. So that means the first thing we're going to actually do in this expression is take x squared because that's a power. The third operations are multiplications and divisions. Do those from left to right. Finally, the last thing is addition and subtraction. Back to our original problem, we'll notice that we have a numerator here, so that means we have to figure out the entire numerator before we can do the division. So let's just look at the top, the numerator. It's 2x squared minus 10. There's no numerators or, or denominators or parentheses there, so the next thing to look at are exponents or powers. So the first thing we're going to do is actually take the square. So we'll have 3 squared is 9. The 
the next thing we want to look at here is going to be either the multiplication or the subtraction. Multiplication comes before subtraction always. So we're going to multiply 2 times 9. We'll end up with 18. OK, great. Now I'm going to subtract 10. That's next. 18 minus 10 gives me 8. OK, good. Now I figured out that the entire numerator works out to 8. So I'm ready to do the division. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. Now I've done all the operations. 2 is the final answer. OK, let's try out a few more examples. Here I've written three expressions. And let's just see what they evaluate to when I plug in some values of x. In particular, let's say x could be equal to 2 or 6. If you'd like, you can pause the video and try and fill in the values right now. You didn't pause, did you? Anyway, let's plug in some values for x. 2 plus 4 times 2 for x is, well, first we do the multiplication. So we get 4 times 2 is 8. And the answer works out to be 10. In the next case, we first look inside the parentheses. We'll have 3 times x minus 1. x is 2. So this is going to be 2 times 6 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. So this is going to be 2 times 5. And the answer is also 10. Let's look at the last one. There's a lot of operations there. So we might have to figure out which one to do first. We'll do the exponent first. We'll have 5 times 2 squared is 4 minus 12 divided by 4. Now I can do the multiplication on the left. I'll have 20 minus what's 12 divided by 4. I get 3. Final answer is 17. OK, now let's plug in 6. For the first expression, 2 plus 4 times 6 is equal to 2 plus 24. That's just 26. For the second one, it's 2 times, in parentheses, 3 times 6 minus 1. I have to finish what's in the parentheses first, so it's going to be 18 minus 1, which is 2 times 17. Now I'm done with what's inside the parentheses. I can do the multiplication outside it. I get 34. Now for the third one, I have to do the power first. So it's 5 times 6 squared is 36 minus 12 divided by 6. I can do the multiplication on the left first. I get 180 minus 12 over 6. Now I should do the division before the subtraction because of the order of operations. So I have 180 minus 2. That's 12 divided by 6. And I can simplify that to 178. Good job.